to a fracture that is the pathological fracture first of all if you guys are new to my channel please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button so you get notified every time i post new videos we are now seeing all of the topics of orthopedics or you are seeing the orthopedic series okay also one more thing if you feel my lectures are slow please go in the settings above tap on the playback speed button and you can change you can increase or decrease the speed of my videos as per your need so you can rapidly revise all the topics of orthopedics from through my channel okay now before starting with anything let us first quickly see what are we going to cover in this session the first part is introduction of patho uh, pathological fractures that is what you mean by pathological fractures then we are going to see the causes of pathological fracture its diagnosis and its treatment first of all the introduction pathological fracture as the name suggests any fracture which has the underlying pathology is the pathological fracture okay so let us write it down and the fracture with underlying pathology is the pathological fracture so what this pathology are these pathologies are responsible for weakening of bone means what happen in pathological fracture the bone is abnormal okay in causes we are going to see what are the causes of the weakening of bone but in, let us see in pathological fracture the bone is abnormal but the force acting on those weak bone are normal the normal hand picking up things or just the slight fall these normal trivial injuries the small injuries can cause the fractures because the bones are weak okay so the bones are abnormal but the force acting on this is normal okay this is what you mean by the pathological fractures now let us move towards the causes okay so in pathological fractures we have one the localized cause and then we have two the the generalized cause we will see first of all all the localized cause in detail first of all is the hered first of all is inflammation or infection of bone the inflammation or infection of bone causes weakening of bone those are pyogenic osteomyelitis or tubercular osteomyelitis then we have the neoplastic one in neoplastic in neoplastic see we have benign and malignant in benign cause of pathological fractures we have giant tumor cells we have giant cell tumor and and chondroma okay so we have giant cell tumor and chondroma in malignant in malignant cause we have two first of all is the primary and then the secondary that is metastatic metastasis of the primary tumors so the, so the primary cause is osteosarcoma or twix tumor okay so these are the two primary causes in secondary causes in males we have the lung prostate and kidney carcinoma and in female it is breast lung or genital carcinomas okay so these are the neoplastic causes of pathological fractures then we have miscellaneous those are simple bone cysts those are simple bone cysts radiation lesions or any ischemia all these are responsible for the causing of pathological fractures so all we have seen okay these are the localized cause of pathological fractures now let us see the generalized cause in detail okay so the first one we are going to see is hereditary hereditary so in hereditary we have osteogenic imperfecta then we have osteoporosis and then we have the dyschondroplasia okay so these are the hereditical cause of pathological fractures then we have our acquired in acquired we have osteoporosis osteomalacia rickets scurvy dissemination of malignancies in bone so what are the disseminated malignancies in bone we have multiple myeloma and diffuse metastatic cancer okay so these are the disseminated malignancies in bone okay now we have miscellaneous as well those are two the paget's disease on miscellaneous pp pp the paget's disease and the polyosteotic dysplasia okay so all these are the causes of pathological fracture in all of these causes the osteoporosis is the most common cause of pathological fractures right okay now let us move so to move towards the diagnosis okay whenever a fracture comes to you you take the history that it is um you get a history as if it is a mild minor fall or any uh, any normal strenuous work which caused the fracture but that fracture had a history of pain in that fractured area like if for example your humerus are getting is getting fractured because of osteoporosis okay so this humerus will have pain some days prior to the 
fracture. This pain is an indication that there is a pathology, there is an underlying pathology in that upper limb and which may lead to the pathological fractures. So you get history, you get history of pain in the affected area. Okay, so this is the classical presentation of pathological fractures. So, and we are going to diagnose it with X-ray. On X-ray, you will be able to see the fracture and the pathology. Like, is there any cyst, tumor, lesion, or whether the heart is osteoporosis, anything. You can see if there is a pathology of bone, you will be able to see on imaging the, X, uh, the fracture and the pathology. So, by hearing this, we can say, or we, we might be thinking that we can prevent this pathological fractures, right? You can profile, you can have a prophylactic care to prevent this fracture. Yes, there you can prevent this pathological fracture if you diagnose that pathology beforehand, right? If a person is suffering from osteoporosis, severe osteoporosis, if the person is a patient of Paget's disease or any other pathology, first treat that pathology. If you treat that pathology, the fracture is not going to happen. So pathological fractures, preventable fracture, if you, if you search for this pathology beforehand and treat it. Okay, now let us move towards the treatment, right? So in treatment, what we are going to see is, you, you are going to take the treatment in two part, two things. Okay, first of all, we are going to see the, we are going to detect the underlying pathology. We are going to detect the underlying pathology. Obviously, if we, if we treat the cause, you treat the fracture. Okay, so after searching the underlying pathology, now we are going to see what is the capacity. We are going to assess the capacity of bone to unite, to see whether the bone is able to undergo union. So we are going to assess the capacity of bone to unite. Okay, so under these two headings, we are going to see how we are going to treat the fractures. Okay, as you have seen here, the capacity of bone to unite, when you get a fracture, you get either union of the fracture, delayed union of the fracture or non-union of the fracture. What, you're going, what we are going to see, the first one, the union. Okay, then we have the delayed union. Okay, in delayed union, you get the union of the bone, but it is delayed. And the third part we get is non-union. Okay, so in union of the, in union cases, those are the cases of Paget's disease, osteogenesis imperfecta or osteoporosis. Okay, in these cases, you get the union of the fracture, right? But uh, union of the fracture, and all you have to do is you have to conventionally treat the fractures, like uh, approximate the fractured end, and you have to immobilize the limb or the part which has been fractured. So this is a conventional way of treating fracture. If you treat this union pathological fracture conventionally, you will you are going to get the proper healing and union of bone. But in cases of osteomyelitis, sorry, the cyst, the cyst, and benign tumor of bone in case of cyst and benign tumor of the bone the bone is going to unite for sure it's going to unite but there is a delayed union of bone you get the delayed healing of fracture right so it is going to unite but union is delayed okay there are some fractures that there is some there are some but, sorry, pathological fractures which are not going to unite at all. And the, those are the metastatic bone bone lesions. Okay. These metastatic bone lesions are not going to unite at all unless and until you give the chemotherapy, you, um, you give the radiotherapy. After giving the chemotherapy and radiotherapy, you are going to see that the bones are healing. So it is not going to unite at all unless you do chemo and radio therapy okay now in between here the delayed union and non-union we have a type or okay that is there can be the delayed union or non-union 
depending on the severity of the cause. In case of osteomyelitis, if you treat the osteomyelitis in conventional method, it is going to show the delayed union or it will not unite, un, uh, unite at all depending on the severity of osteomyelitis. Okay, so these are the ways you can treat the fractures and you are going to get the three types, union, delayed union, delayed union or non-union and proper non-union. Okay, as the advancing techniques in the treatment of fractures, you can use, a you, you can give, you can do surgical fixation of bones, right? You can mobilize the patient by the surgical fixation of bone or you can do bone graft or bone cement. Okay. Let's move towards the MCQ on pathological fractures. Some questions are covered in the lecture and some are new. So I am covering some left out points through MCQ which will go in your mind, like fit in your mind very properly. Okay, so let us move towards the first question. What is the most common cause of pathological fracture? As we have discussed, the most common cause of pathological fracture is? Okay, pause the video and comment down below what are the answers of this question and check whether you have answered it properly or not. Right? Okay, so comment down the answer below in the comment section. So, the most common cause of pathological fracture is osteoporosis. The answer for this question is C. Check whether you have given it right. Okay. Now, which bone is fractured most commonly in pathological fracture? This part is not covered in the, uh, in the lecture. So, please listen it carefully. Which bone is most commonly fractured in pathological fracture? The answer to it is vertebrae. Okay. So the answer of this question is the most common bone which is fractured in um, pathological fracture is the vertebra. Okay. Now the next question is what do you mean by skyphosis? Okay. Because of the most because of the fractures of vertebrae because of as it is a pathological fracture you get the fractures of vertebrae. There is the normal curve of vertebra is is like this. See. Right? This is the cervical part, this is the thorax part, this is the lumbar, this is the lumbar part, and this is sacral part. Right? But what happens in skyphosis because of the fractures of vertebrae, as the vertebrae is fractured, you get the bending of the bending of the vertebral column, and that bending of vertebral column is called as skyphosis. Okay. Now let us move towards the last question which is not the proper approach to treat the pathological fractures which is not focus on the word not okay so we do internal fixation right we mobilize the limb we don't do external fixation in pathological fracture we don't put pins rods anything in pathological fractures we do bone graft we do treat the underlying cause of the pathological fracture so the answer for this is b Okay, so now here we are done with the topic of pathological fractures with its explanation and the MCQs. If you are still new to my channel, please subscribe to my channel, hit that like button. If you like this video, give me your all your suggestions are welcome.